In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from paper 3-2 from 2024 of the Cambridge A-Level exam. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, check out the description below for a link to a playlist. And if you're looking for a different paper entirely, have a look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, we're not in a classroom, we're on YouTube. So take advantage of that. Use the pause, uh, rewind and fast forward uh, buttons. Um, if you find this video or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate liking, subscribing or even sharing. Ultimately, question five is going to be a question about using the iterative formula. But it begins by giving us this equation here and asking and telling us it has only one root and then show by calculation it lies between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8. So how, do, how am I going to do that? I'll, I'll do it like this. I'll, I'll split this up into a, a few parts. I'm going to, I'm going to calculate e, e to the 2x at these two points. And then I'm going to calculate 5 plus cosine 3x at these two points. Simply, simply put these in a the calculator. Um, e to the power of 2 times 0 0.7 or e to the power of 1.4 really. And we put all these into the calculator. I'll just jot down the numbers. You get 4.055 I think, 4.953, 4.495 and uh, 4.2 Six three. Um, I might be a little off on my handwriting. I can't even read my own handwriting. Anyway, that you get something like that. Now, what does that tell you? Uh, I'm not going to draw this accurately. I don't really care what these shapes look like. I'm just going to say that at zero point seven and uh, zero point eight. E to the x is at uh, four. This is a uh, e to the x here and. Um, at 0 0.8, it is at 4.9. Uh, 5 plus cosine 3x. At 0 0.7, it's at 4.4. And at 0 0.8, it's at uh, 4.2. Something like that. Um, I should have used different uh, markers, I guess, because no matter how you get between here, and no matter how you get between here, they have to cross at some point. Uh, usually they could cross hundreds of times, but uh, they, they told us it only has one re real root. So that means it can only cross once, but it has to have crossed between these two points because they were above each other. One was above the other, then it was below the other. So it had to cross at some point. That's all you have to do to answer this question. A, a drawing like this would probably, I think, be enough. A bit of English, something, something what I said there. Uh, at 0 0.7, above and below. At 0 0.8, the other way around. That's, that's enough. In part B, they give us this new equation here and um, they, they tell us show that, uh, show that this equation works is basically, but they're only giving one mark for this. So they're not asking you to explain everything about how convergence works, which I guess I'll talk about in a minute. Um, they're really just asking you to get from this equation to something that looks like this one. That's all they're asking. They near. This question comes up every year and they nearly always ask you to do something like that. So really it's rearrange this to make it look like this. Uh, there's a couple of clues when you look at it. Five plus cosine 3x is in both of them. So this x came from over here. So let's play around with this part. Get the natural log of both sides. Which again, that I know, I know it's right because I can see the natural log there as well. Natural log of the left becomes 2x. Um, equals natural log of all of this, 5 plus cosine 3x. Divide both sides by 2. This is why you're only getting w one mark for this. It's really not long. Divide both sides by 2, we get a half natural log 5 plus cosine 3x. That's enough. That's, that's your one mark. Uh, this is identical to this, except it has uh, x to the n and x to the n plus 1. That's, a, that's all the changes. Um, how iteration works, I don't fully remember, but basically x is a straight line. y equals x. This, no matter what it looks like, uh, let's say it looks something like that. Uh, I have no idea what it looks like. Um, it definitely doesn't look like this. <laughs> but anyway, um, if you make a guess at one of these numbers, uh, especially on this side, and this, on this uh, one here, if I make a guess here, 
let's say this is my guess. It's gonna go here, um, we, we get an answer out. This answer, we put it back into the other side and we get a new guess. And this will stay, uh, this time it's actually, it's actually worked too well. It's gonna bounce around until it finds the point where it crosses. It, it won't always work. Um, if I, I can't remember the rules that tell me when it will work and when it won't. But it, I, often, it might bounce. You might get unlucky, first of all, and bounces around. Uh, if, if it ever crosses twice, you might jump from one to the other. Uh, and then there's some, there's some formulas that, that I, I think you have to differentiate to find out, to prove it works. I can't remember. I haven't, I haven't looked at the proof of it for years. You don't need that. I just wanted to, to, to tell you there is a reason we get from this to this. It's something about bouncing lines over here. That's enough, okay? The, the real question comes down to part C. In part C, they ask you to use this iterative formula to find, uh, to find the answer, find where the root is. Um, they tell us they want the answer to three decimal places, but every time we do an iterative formula, they want five decimal places. Very common instructions. These, this is, comes up every year. And uh, what that means is they want you to make a guess at X. They don't, they often tell you to guess. They don't in this case. And uh, we do know it's between, I've rubbed it out there. It was between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8. Pick any number in there. You'll get the same answer. You'll get different uh, answers along the way, but you'll get the same answer at the end. So I'm going to take a guess at 0 0.75, just, just the middle of the two numbers. And how we use this iterative formula is, if I put x0 in here, I will get x1 out here. So what I mean is x1 will equal a half natural log five plus cosine three times x0, which I, I've made a guess at. And if I put all that, if I, if I put all this into a calculator, instead of x0, I put in 0 0.75, and I'll go get my notes, I will get the number, and again, your number will be slightly different if you made a different guess. But I get the number 0 0.73759. That's five decimal places. Uh, let's just put it to three decimal places as well um, for something that'll work out for us later. Um, so this also equals to three decimal places, 0 0.738, I guess. Okay. Now, to get the next, and we stay going, we basically stay going this until, until this number agrees with itself. Until, because we're honing in on the answer. That's what this jumping around I was trying to explain. We're, we're jumping around and we're getting closer and closer to the answer. And um, so X2, we do the same thing. We put the same equation out, put it all into the calculator three times X1 this time all the same and we put it into the calculator and we should get uh, 0 0.74094 uh, which the three decimal places is 0 0.741 and we stay going uh, I'll just write down the numbers this point. I do have a shortcut to help you with all this I'll t explain in a moment uh, if you do all this again putting x2 in this this five decimal decimal number early sorry i put in um i put in 10 decimal places because my calculator remembered the number for me which i'll explain more in a moment uh, for x3 i got 0 0.74003 which is also roughly equal to 0 0.740 and for x4 i get 0 0.74028 which is also 0 0.740. And that's when I, I know this is the answer. That's when I've got close enough to the answer. If I stay going, I'll just keep getting this same three decimal places. Uh, I'll get different numbers here, um, but I'll still get these same ones. Okay, that's the that's where we're finished, uh, but just a, a faster way to do this. So many students make mistakes here because you have to put this into the calculator. Uh, four times um, so that that can make a lot of mistakes uh, a, a nice trick you can do it on every calculator each calculator is different but uh, do the same thing on all of them and um, if you just put in 0 0.75 and press equals that will make your calculator remember that this is the the previous answer then when you write this formula into your calculator lots of brackets everywhere 
instead of 0 0.75, if you put, there's a, a button on your calculator, um, answer, an answer button. If you press that at this point, then close all your brackets. What your calculator does is it knows this formula and it, it puts in the last answer it got. You press equals, you'll get this. But at this point, your calculator still remembers the formula and now it remembers that this is the last answer. So if you just press equals again, it will shoot this answer out. Press equals again, it'll get this one. Equals again, it'll get this one. You can just tap equals and get this as good as you want. I went all the way to 15 times x15. And no matter what number you started with, uh, if you do this and put tap your calculator 15 times or maybe maybe a few different, depending on your guess, uh, you'll get serious. I, this is the answer to 10 decimal places, I believe. Uh, two, two, three, eight, five, seven, nine. So that's the, that's the perfectly correct to 10 decimal places. If, uh, if you did on a computer, you'd have to stay doing it a few more times and you'd get it to 100 decimal places, a million decimal places. You can stay going on forever. Okay, that's, a, that's question five finished. If you have any follow-up questions, Please let me know. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.